Hey, how are you? I decided to come back and share a video more on the gardening end today and so I'm really excited to talk with you about tomatoes and really basic seed starting. Um, so how are you guys doing first off? I don't really have notes for this. I hope I won't be rambling too much. I hope to not make this too long or too drawn out but I really just think that we have such a an amazing opportunity right now to empower ourselves to learn some basic skills for one everybody has not not everybody I should say but a lot of us have a little more time than normal because whether you're working from home or you just have some of your extracurriculars cut out you have more time on your hands and that can be a very weird thing for I think when it's like a sudden shift in your schedule it can also be an amazing thing because you can learn a new skill that you've really been wanting to learn you can take on a new hobby that you've been wanting to take on you can reconnect with your family on a deeper and more meaningful level um, there's there's a lot of um, silver linings in this cloud and I don't want to downplay it because I think it is a serious thing what's happening I'm not going to get um, too political on this video because or share my opinions too much on all the differing theories or whatever but um, just to think about how can you empower you and for me when I have this a little bit of extra time my day is not so much different than usual since we um, we're already homeschooling but my husband is mostly working from home so that does free up a little bit of my time just because he's not commuting and whatnot so right now um, my older boys are outside making firewood and the other kids are playing and now's a good time for me to share so anyways um, where do I want to start with this um, I began gardening maybe eight to no maybe 10 or 12 years ago and I didn't have a very big garden but the first thing I did when I created my first garden at our last house was I had my uh, husband build me a sign that said victory garden over the top of the garden and I just think it's so ironic that you know I had that in me then and now look at what we're facing. And I'm not saying all of this to put you into fear, and I'm not saying like, you should panic and start gardening out of fear. I'm saying now is an amazing time to empower yourself and to recognize, for me, it, you know, I was already aware of how vulnerable our food system is or could be. And so th these are all things that I would already be doing. Like I already started growing these tomatoes before this whole thing went crazy in America anyways. So I, I don't want to to um, share like panic or fear or any of that. I just want you to, you know, if, if planting or, or getting a few backyard chickens or whatever it may be, if that's something that you've been feeling inspired to do for a while and now this is like motivating you to actually take action, I think that's a really good thing or it could be a really good thing right so anyways I want to share some really basic or I'll try to keep it basic I don't know where I'm going with this I haven't really done many gardening videos so just apologies and thank you for sticking with me if you do stick with me um, and here I'm telling you like keep it simple keep it real basic um, you can start seeds with very little knowledge with things that you already have on hand and then here I am showing you my 17 different tomato varieties <laughs> okay so it's a little conflicting I get that but I thought you know what maybe I could share with you what tomatoes I'm growing and in that process I can share with you you know what you might want to look for when you're choosing a seed variety and some just some general things to think about for your garden um, Tomatoes are just a really good crop in most areas. I live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, so we have a really short growing season. However, if I choose the correct um, varieties of tomatoes and I am prepared to baby them along a little bit, 
um, in those cold spells still, I can get a really good crop of tomatoes in two to three months. That being said, a lot of this information is dependent upon your area, where you're growing. So typically when you have a tomato, you want to start that tomato about eight to 10 weeks before your last frost date. And you can easily look um, on Google and find out when your last frost date is, type in your area, type in your zip code, look on a map and it will show you um, your zones. Um, you can call, assuming they're open, I don't know guys, you can call a zoning extension in your area. You could call uh, just somebody you know, gardens, and ask them if they'd be willing to um, let you know when to sow your seeds. You, you do want to um, become a researcher and by that I mean don't like yes you can ask questions of people yes you can seek help but be someone who's willing to be proactive and research it for yourself first and if your research um, doesn't give you clarity then maybe ask the question because a lot of this information is not um, if it just stays in your head as head knowledge it's not really helpful and I find that the things that I learn and actually retain are the things that I invest my time into researching and then actually trying and then you learn often through mistakes right so already I'm going on a tangent okay so I wanted to share with you some basic things about tomatoes I'm um, there's so many helpful YouTube videos you guys out there already that I'm there's no way I'm gonna be able to touch on on everything with growing tomatoes but I thought today I would share with you some seed st starting strategy some tips for choosing seeds and what to look for in a variety based upon your location okay so I have listed I have just a tiny bit of notes I have listed the traits that are important to me in choosing a tomato and Granted, some of these you're going to hear me talk about. I get I got caught up on a whim and tried something for really no reason other than I got like emotionally curious about it. And that's okay. I don't really recommend you go too crazy on that, especially if you're brand new. But in a couple months or more, I will be sharing another video. I will follow up with this video and and you will see if that was a good strategy or not 17 different varieties I might really regret it or I might I don't know if you guys can see this all of them are sprouted onto one tray right now and I will have to separate them out fairly soon because they're they're sown really thickly about three to four seeds per cell and then I will take those out and put those in separate pots okay so traits that are important to me when I am looking at specifically tomatoes are they productive are they flavorful are they disease resistant are they fun or interesting and are they early ripening so you might have a list of priorities totally different and some of these things contradict each other a lot like some things are really fun and interesting but they might not be productive or they might not be disease resistant they might not be early ripening. So then I have to ask myself, am I willing to sacrifice garden space for that plant? And you have to be realistic with the amount of space you have. If you only have a four by four bed, I would go with the most productive seed that you can find. And, and because we are in, I just wanna put this out there too, that because we are in a challenging time right now, I don't know how easy it is going to be to find to source seeds right now so I don't want you to get so caught up in that you have to have this specific variety that I'm talking about because honestly anything is better than nothing if you're really feeling called to grow tomatoes go to Walmart buy a pack of tomato seeds and see what happens um, I know that some seed companies are closing temporarily just so they can catch up on the demand because their orders are coming in through through so fast right now and they you know they're having the same challenges that we are as far as the employees being able to work um the, the, the just getting to work just sourcing maybe maybe their shipping 
there's packaging stuff might be held up in the mail like there's so many variables right now so we really have to have a lot of patience and grace with each other so when you're looking online for your seeds um, don't give up on a company just because their doors are like they happen to be closed right now but just be aware that that might be happening right now and so the date of this video is March 25th and I'm sure everyone watching this knows exactly what I'm talking about I'm not gonna go crazy talking about the virus I think what is exciting is to take this opportunity to learn something new so anyways let's get started on seed starting first before I get into the varieties I will just tell you exactly what I did to start this tray okay there's plenty of methods online but the the basics of starting seeds are the same all you need are your seeds you need a soil and you need a container to put the soil in and a rule of thumb when you sow seeds is the depth that you plant the seed is the same um, width as the seed itself so you, the tomato seeds are pretty small and so I just put a very very small amount of soil on top it's different than say a bean seed a bean seed is pretty big or a squash seed is pretty big so you plant it about that deep down into the soil so that's it's once you know that it's like oh I never have to look online again how deep to plant my seeds you simply know based upon how big the seed is super helpful as far as germinating tomato seeds specifically they do like warmth to germinate and what I will do is I will put like a lid on them so this tray I put a lid on and I did have it on a heat map but you could just as easily put it on top of your fridge on top of your fridge is a really good place to um, germinate seeds because it, it's warm up there and usually that space is free for you to put stuff on now when you are starting seeds there's something critical that you have to think about with the timing of when to start your seeds it's not only your last frost date it's how much space you have to put the plants once they're beyond seedlings they're going to need need to be potted into I use little disposable cups because they're so cheap and I reuse them until they are not usable um, but you need to think one little seedling is going to grow into a decent sized plant and you're going to have to have space in your house either under a under a windowsill under grow lights or possibly a cold frame outside depending on your climate you're going to need to have room to put that plant. So if you have a very small garden, um, do not make the mistake that I am most likely making because honestly, it's kinda early for me still and I'm looking at my grow lights and I'm like, just with my peppers and my dahlias and some other little things I have started, I'm looking at my lights and I'm saying, hmm, where am I going to put all these tomatoes once I pot them up? So like I said, don't, don't do what I do, do as I say, because this is going to be very interesting. And my real goal or hope with growing this many is that I'll be able to focus on production first and be able to share some of these some of these plant starts with my community whether I sell them trade stuff or just give them away I don't know just whatever happens I'm okay with and I, you have to think you have to be um, practical I've made the mistake and I'm probably making it again this year to be truthful of starting too many seeds too early and they can grow tomatoes even though they say eight to ten weeks uh, they can grow pretty fast if you have good conditions for them they can grow fast and so the bigger the plant gets before you put it in the ground you have to think you're buying most likely buying potting soil unless you have access to good mulch in your yard but a lot of people are buying potting soil you're buying the cups to put it in and a lot of it is also time now not only watering your plants taking time to up pot them once or twice or sometimes more times and um, pruning them, keeping them healthy. So if I didn't have grow lights or a greenhouse, I personally would probably not start my seeds earlier than six weeks before my last frost because even that is a, quite a long time. And what I've found is even if your plants are smaller when you set them out, like tomatoes, 
it's really just about the condition for the for the tomato. So I've set out a big plant earlier and it's been hit by cold and that plant does all so much worse than a small plant that I put out later and never n never is stunted by the cold or you know it's it's not root bound because I didn't plant it too early. So anyways, I hope that kind of gives you a basic background on seed starting. There's so much information online. Don't get overwhelmed. Just if you have even a couple things you want to grow, you can easily research those couple things. Find out, is this a crop that is ideal for me to start in containers or am I better off sowing it directly in the ground? And for tomatoes, I always start them in containers because our, our growing season is way too short for me to start them in the ground. But that being said, okay. So once you know how many plants um, that you'd like to do. My kids are coming in, so there might be some racket going on. Once you know how many plants you'd like to do um, and how many varieties you'd like to grow, then you can figure out about how many plants you want and that's realistic for your space. Um, I'm gonna share with you, okay, disclaimer, even though my goal this year is with production and that was even before this whole a virus thing hit, I was really thinking, okay, what grows good in my garden? Um, what do we love to eat the most of? Um, what what do I want to do with the produce? Do I want to be able to eat fresh all year, all summer, or do I want to be able to put some away for winter? And I really want to put stuff away for next winter, and so tomatoes is a really good crop. Even though we have a short growing season, I can get a lot at the end of the growing season. So, anyways, <laughs> I'm going all over the place with this. Let's get started on the varieties and my hope is that I'm going to be able to do a follow-up video with you sharing what varieties um, were my favorite, maybe what I didn't like so well, what I loved about ones, what I didn't love about others, whatever. So first I'm going to start with the cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes are really awesome if you have a short growing season, you want production and you want production fast. Um, there's a lot of different varieties of cherry tomatoes out there. My favorite tasting cherry tomatoes personally are the yellow and the oranges and I've, I have only one year had really good luck growing um, the orange cherry tomatoes. So this year I'm trying three different varieties of orange cherry tomatoes and one variety of red cherry tomatoes. So I'm just going to briefly share with you which ones I'm, I'm using and maybe where I got the seeds from, although like I said, you might not be able to get seeds still from the exact companies, but hopefully you can look them up online and find other places to order if you want to get your hands on some seeds still. All right, so one variety, and I got these from Johnny's Seeds, is Sun Gold. Now, this is a hybrid variety of tomato, and one thing you have to know about hybrids, hybrid versus heirloom, you're gonna see that all over um, online, especially when it comes to tomatoes, because there's this big craze with heirloom tomatoes, and rightfully so, they are usually delicious, and there's something kind of cool about knowing a plant's been around for years and years. However, there's a lot of misinformation out there about hybrid plants, and so you should know that a hybrid is not like a GMO. It's not like a bad plant for you. What it is, is it's specific crosses of maybe two different or a few different varieties of tomatoes that have been developed over the year. And if you save seeds from a hybrid, it will not, um, like your next generation of seed that you saved from a hybrid plant will not produce the same seed. That's all that it means. So it's not bad for your health. In a lot of cases, it's more vigorous. It's a lot of cases, it's more disease resistant. Um, they bred, they bred it for a reason. Um, it's just simply that you cannot save the seed from it and expect the same result the following year. So, to me, it makes. I actually didn't really know that much of a difference between a hybrid and an heirloom until the last few years, and I kind of bought into the craze that oh, it's got to be heirloom, this and that. But honestly, it doesn't matter because even heirloom plants are simply crosses of some different tomatoes that produce a specific plant and then that that plant has been stabilized 
by breeding consistently over the years and now it has like a stable stable genetics basically so you can save seed from an heirloom and expect to get that same plant expect to get that same tomato right so not the case with hybrids but I am growing a couple hybrids this year because I don't feel that I have tried enough of them and because I want productivity in my garden this year I'm like this is the year for me to really try hybrids so one of the hybrids like I said is the sun gold cherry tomato and it's supposed to be very productive it's the tomato that you think of when you think of an orange tomato for the most part um, I'm really excited to try it. I'm gonna keep going along and try to kind of keep moving this along because it's gonna be long already, I can tell. So, Berry's Crazy Cherry is, I have heard that this, I haven't grown this one yet. I have heard that this, this tomato is crazy productive. And so that is the main reason I chose it. I re, I've read a lot of conflicting information on whether people like the taste of this tomato or not. One thing you have to think about with tomatoes is the taste is very subjective. Some people love a sweet tomato, some people love a tart tomato, some people love a juicy tomato, some people love a dry tomato. So I have flavorful as a, a trait that I want to um, grow, but that the meaning of that could be so different person to person. So you have to kind of, um, once you've grown or eaten garden tomatoes for a while, you might begin to learn, okay, I love the tartness, I love the sweetness, I love the smokiness, whatever it might be. And then you can look for those those specific qualities. I wouldn't get too hung up on it if you're a brand new gardener and you haven't tasted a lot of heirloom tomatoes or you haven't, um, just because why, why overthink what can be very basic, right? But I am taking this beyond basic by sharing with you my 17 different varieties of seeds. So anyways, the, the next seed variety that I have is Napa Chardonnay. And I also got this from Rare Seeds. I think you can also find this at, um, I'm gonna have a brain fart, uh, Brad's, Brad's, <laughs> Wild Boar Farm. I'm like, I know his name is Brad. Wild Boar Farm sells a lot of interesting varieties of tomatoes, and I'm I'm just trying a couple of his cherry tomatoes. I, I'm not going too crazy on his seeds. I have tried a few of them, and I've liked them, but I'm going for production this year. So another, cher another tomato that I got is from Uprising Seeds. This is a new to me seed company, um, and I'm excited to try this. It's a, called Pinky Cherry Tomato, and it's supposed to be a really small cherry tomato, like one where you could pick the whole, the whole truss of the tomato and um, take that in the house and just have this beautiful display. Well, this is probably one that I got caught up in my emotions. <laughs> beautiful like truss of cherry tomatoes just laying on this branch, and you just bring the whole branch in your house, and it looks so beautiful, like, like I grew this for a wedding or something. But no, it's just it's just for munching on. So. Anyways, I wanted to have one red tomato to try and I chose that one. So the next tomato, um, I'm getting into the bigger size tomatoes and these are a variety of sizes, um, but I will share with you what I know about them. And then, like I said, we're going to do another video once these are actually in the ground. So the Juliet is another hybrid that I got from Johnny's Seed and this is not like a very cheap, um, tomato but I've seen a lot of good things people saying a lot of good things about this tomato how productive it is and how early it is and how flavorful it is and so I thought you know what because of where I live my short growing season because I want productivity I'm going to grow a lot of these so some of these tomatoes are going to be like a lot of t space in my garden and some of these will maybe only get one plant or two plants at the most I have a lot of garden space and um, I know tomatoes grow good for me so I'm doing a lot of tomatoes this year all right red oxheart tomato is another just really meaty good uh, tomato for sauce or salsa and it's supposed to be really productive I do not think I have ever grown oxhearts um, so 
I've heard just mainly really good things about it. And then another tomato. So these are from the ox hearts I got from Reimer Seeds, R-E-I-M-E-R. And um, this is the orange ox heart. So very similar except the orange color, which I think is awesome. I've never grown a big orange tomato before. I've grown red, purple, like a dark smoky black, and I've grown green tomatoes, but I've never grown big orange tomatoes. So I'm really excited this year. I have two varieties. Um, this is one of my favorite. It's called Cherokee Purple. It's just an old standard heirloom. Um, at my old house, I had so much luck with this variety. It was pretty much all I grew. Last year, I was really disappointed with it. I think the the, um, the plants themselves are very weak. They just did not do well. They didn't even really, very few of them even made it into my garden. Um, so I'm kind of wondering if some of these seed varieties might, even though they're heirlooms and they're supposed to be stable, depending on the breeding practices, you know, you might end up with a little slightly different plant with different genetics and different um, levels of resistance or whatever. And I really think that the Cherokee Purple may be, this is just one of my theories, that it may be, I'll be out in a minute, okay? It may be a plant that the seeds may not always be stable, but I'm really hoping I can get the production off of this that I once did even though it takes a longer time to, well, it's 80 days, it says, so that's not so bad, but what I would do at my old house is I would harvest all the green tomatoes and I would let them ripen in my house. And and then when, when life slowed down and like once the snow came or once it was the end of the fall, I could start canning because those tomatoes would start to ripen inside in boxes layered with newspapers. And that worked really well for me. It is a little bit of a job to go through and make sure none are rotting and whatnot but okay this is um also from a new to me seed company fruition seeds um and this tomato is an italian heirloom and i've heard so many good things about this too for its size and productivity and flavor and being really good for um sauces and salsa which is what i mainly want to use my tomatoes with for this year so I'm trying it. I have so many different tomatoes here that are more production tomatoes, so I'm really excited. Um, Granny Contrell. This is from Baker's Creek. It looks so pretty and old-fashioned. It doesn't really say a lot about this tomato. I just heard good things about it on online, and so I wanted to try it. So the rest of these seeds are probably varieties that I'm not going to grow a ton of just because based upon the information that I found or my past growing experiences, I don't necessarily want to reserve as much space for them in the garden. So even though I have, you know, 70 different varieties, I'm not growing the same amount of each kind. Um, what I shared so far with you are my going to be my biggest producers, I think, and they will get the most space in the garden. So. Why don't you go play? I'll be out in one minute, okay? It won't take me long. Thanks, sweetie. Okay, the next tomato is Rosie de Bernie. I don't know how to say this. And I mean, honestly, just the, um, sometimes just what they say to sell their plants totally works on me, which is, if we could only grow a single tomato, this is it. Brandywine's abundant cousin with truly incredible flavor and soft crack resistant skin perfect for sandwiches <laughs> so I totally get suckered by this stuff because I'm like I have to try that because I love a brandy wine tomato but I have so much bad luck oh my battery is like close to dying okay I have so much bad luck um with like blossom end rot because my soil is pretty wet here and so I haven't had much luck with the brandy wines at my new house. And I've only gardened here for two years so far. So my garden is super new. Even though it's big, it's the soil is still not the best because I'm amending it a lot still. So anyways, I do know my my tomatoes can tolerate my soil. They just I have to watch that they don't get too overwatered. So anyways, the next this was a free gift from um, Baker's Creek, 
and it's called purple Russian tomato and I wasn't going to plant it just because I'm like oh I have so many tomato varieties already it's already out of control I don't know what I'm thinking but then I kind of read up about it online and once again I'm like it said super hearty early early production um, delicious taste and I love purple tomatoes because they have that smoky flavor that's like my favorite tomato flavor so I tend to be a sucker for those types of tomatoes and I'll let you in on a little something from my garden last year I grew mainly um, black tomatoes that I had no experience with and I was pretty disappointed because a lot of them were not very productive and it probably wasn't just the varieties fault I think it had to do with several things but um, I'm growing more of a variety this year for that reason because I feel like if I grow all these purple tomatoes and I get very low production I'm, di I'm a little disappointed you're right so that's why I am trying more varieties <laughs> this year okay the next variety I got again from Reimer Seeds I don't know how to pronounce that but it's Aunt Ruby's German Green Tomato and I like the tartness of a green tomato like I'm not crazy for it like it's not my favorite flavor but it's really like unique and it's really like I don't know there's just like a bite to it like a sourness to it that's so good in certain things and I am a little romantic when I think about my garden I like to think of my tomato basket and all these beautiful colors it's just a rainbow overflowing with colors and sometimes I'm like okay just be a little more practical for a change you know but this is definitely one that um, claimed to have very high production and not just the seed company claims but other people that I read about who have grown it past claimed it was like one of their best green tomatoes that they've ever grown so I'm going to give it a try. I tried the green zebra before and it I just didn't feel like it was productive enough to give it space in my garden. So I'm excited to see if this one can produce. All right, so I grew a lot of these tomatoes last year. Um, if you guys have been following me on social media or Instagram or anything for a while, you maybe remember seeing like, I had these like, like they were as big as my face, just these super pleated, super crazy looking tomatoes and these are from Baker's Creek um, so some things about these they were very productive they were very disease res resistant they were very fun and cool to look at the flavor I did not love so that was a bummer that was a big bummer like to me they were too uh, mm, like it wasn't specifically the the flavor I guess I think it was more the texture like I like my tomatoes to be juicy but not like spongy like this almost had like too soft of a texture for me um and it wasn't super jelly like there's these big air gaps where the seeds grow and there's not like tons of juice like there is on some tomatoes um it just it wasn't the tomato that you took a bite of plain and, and you're just like, oh, I just gotta have more of this, you know? So I am gonna probably only grow like one of these this year, even though this, like I said, very productive for me, um, very disease resistant and very cool to look at. If a tomato isn't gonna taste like unreal, I don't know that I want to. I, I actually debated if I should grow these at all but because they were so easy to grow and so like cool to look at, that should not be the priority, but whatever, I guess it is for me for a little bit. So this is another tomato, Dr. Witchy's Yellow. I don't know for sure how to pronounce that. It's from Rare Seeds and it's supposed to be a big like beefsteak yellow tomato. So I'm excited because once again, I haven't grown big yellow or orange tomatoes before. So, I'm really excited. Okay, this is another one, Paul Robeson, that I didn't know if it was going to make the list again because I grew this one last year and the flavor was so good. Like, honestly, so good. Like, when you took a bite of this, you're like, I need more of this. But I had a lot of disease, not disease problem, blossom end with, end rot with this. And it could just totally be my, my soil. That probably is what it is. 
and that's why I want to give it another try and see if this year now that you know I've been gardening a little longer and I've been amending my soil and hopefully it's a little better draining um, that this might you know I want more of these but it's not going to take up much room in my garden because I don't know how much it will produce for me but the flavor is top-notch so Paul Robeson super popular heirloom variety you can probably find it at some seed places okay this is another like random try for me it's a dwarf tomato it's called Arctic Rose only 67 days to fruit supposedly which is like crazy because it's like a standard size tomato maybe a little sm on the smaller side three to eight ounces perfect for slicing salads and salsa trellis three foot plants for easier harvest perfect for containers so my thought with this was that I don't know if I will grow it in a container because I have a lot of garden space and containers I find to be a little fussier especially with something like a tomato um, it would be cool to be able to share this with people, to be able to give this to someone who wants to grow a tomato and they don't have a garden, they just have a patio. Um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to try this because it, it looks so pretty. <laughs> I'm such a sucker for the romantic, but it looks so pretty and if it's really fruited in 67 days, that would be pretty cool. Um, Okay, so the difference with a dwarf tomato is that you cannot uh, prune a dwarf, a dwarf tomato or a semi-dwarf tomato the same way that you would prune a tomato that's going to keep growing, growing, and growing. So I won't get into it so much on this video because I'm going to talk about it more when I'm actually planting my tomatoes out. But the difference between um, those two types of tomatoes, detriment and indetriment, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Oh. Um, you can read about online and see what the difference is, but you have to um, prune them differently, basically, or not prune them. Um, and the very last number 17 variety of my tomato adventures this year is the Garden Peach, and this is from Uprising Seeds. Um, it says, again, this, this description just sold me. I'm such a sucker. Matte yellow walnut sized fruits with delicious red blushing and a fine peach fuzz. Delicious! <laughs> I couldn't resist. So, I hope that, you know, even though maybe that was a little overwhelming having that many varieties to go through if you are a brand new gardener, um, I hope that kind of helps you think about what to think about when you're picking up your seeds. And like I said, if because of this whole crazy food thing or not food thing but it could potentially be a crazy food thing like we have not seen the fullness of how this will affect us and I'm not saying that to freak anyone out but just to be 100% realistic um, that it's not a bad idea to just throw a tomato plant in your garden and see what happens and now you know how to start a seed and you know what to look for should you have an should you have options in choosing your varieties you might know what to look for or say you just go to the nursery and you buy your tomato plants you might be able to ask the questions um, that you might not think about is this an early ripener what does it taste like um, how disease resistant is this plant is this is this an heirloom can i save seeds from it is it an is it a hybrid if it's a hybrid you can still save seeds you just won't get the same type of same type of tomato the next year so I hope that helps you. I think if you guys want, I will do another video on maybe peppers. I don't have a ton of subscribers on my channel yet, so I'm kind of like, oh, do I even like do this? But I know everything starts somewhere. Everything starts from a seed. And I really think if you are feeling called to, to learn a new skill or to invest your time into something, um, now is a really good opportunity because what do you have to lose, right? What do we have to lose? So I hope this helped you. Um, oh, I was gonna show you my real, before I, before I check off here, I was gonna show you my really classy seed storage system. <laughs> it's overflowing with seeds, you guys. It's hilarious, because my husband was just like, making fun of my um, hoarding of my seeds. I'm not a hoarder, but I have a lot of seeds. And um, 
you know, when this whole thing happened, he's like, I'm glad you have a lot of seeds. <laughs> I'm glad too. But like I said, if you, there will be places you can find seeds. Just go to even your local tractor supply, go to Walmart, whatever you have to do. But what I like to do is I have each, like I have my tomatoes in a Ziploc bag. And so I don't want moisture getting in this. Ideally, you don't open these a lot. You just keep it in the Ziploc bag so the moisture can stay out of it. And then I have it in this box. And then the box is in like kind of a, a, a dark cooler cupboard. And these seeds stay good for quite a while, actually. So I think next year I won't have to buy tomato seeds because I have a lot left and I'm hoping to save some seeds this year too so if I get to that I will share that with you guys on my channel anyways I hope you had or are having a great day I'm gonna sign off now and maybe go pot up some plants or do something fun with my some of my extra time so have a good day guys we'll talk to you later bye bye